Hi, I'm Dr. Leela Landowski and today we're talking about synaptic transmission. So synaptic transmission is the process by which a neuron would actually communicate with its target cell through the region which is specifically called a synapse. So let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail. So what we have here is a very stylized diagram of a synapse. So beginning here on the left hand side we have the axon terminal. So remember we've got this signal, this action potential which is traveling down the axon and it terminates at the very aptly named um, axon terminal. So once this action potential reaches the axon terminal what it does is it causes these tiny little vesicles which are full of neurotransmitter to release their contents. Um, and each one of these vesicles contains, wow, about a thousand neurotransmitter molecules, but obviously I can't quite draw that many. So we have this signal, this action potential coming down into the axon terminal, causing these vesicles to release their contents full of neurotransmitter into this region here. We call this region here the synaptic cleft. And the synaptic cleft is so tiny. It's um, 40 nanometers, which is about one two thousandth the width of a human hair. It is so small. So we have all these neurotransmitter molecules sitting here in this synaptic cleft. Now what they then do is they bind to receptors. And these receptors are located on the target cell. We call this specific part of the target cell the postsynaptic membrane. And the reason why it has this term is because it means it's after the, mem after the synapse. So this is the synapse. This is actually the presynaptic neuron. We have the synaptic cleft. And then we have the postsynaptic membrane. Great. So we have these neurotransmitters binding to this, uh, these receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. And those uh, neurotransmitters might either be excitatory or inhibitory. And as the name suggests, the excitatory ones means that this um, target cell is going to be, or probably a neuron, is probably going to be more likely to send a signal, to be activated and to send a signal down. Um, whereas an inhibitory neurotransmitter means it's going to be less likely to be activated. So um, that's the two different types of neurotransmitters. Now this is not the only thing that's going on in this process. So we have another cell type which is actually involved. So we actually have astrocytes and astrocytes literally will wrap themselves around this, um, this synapse. You might be wondering, well, what are they doing there? Well, let me tell you. So these um, astrocytes are mopping up excess neurotransmitter. So what they're doing is, you know, the, the signal has been sent, it's, the neurotransmitter has bound to its receptors, and then the excess stuff is being um, taken up actively by these astrocytes. Um, a similar process is happening here at the presynaptic neuron. So we're also getting this neurotransmitter being um, resorbed into the presynaptic neuron. Some of the neurotransmitter also just diffuses out and some of it also gets broken down by an enzyme. And the reason why this is happening is because we don't want to have that neurotransmitter sitting in that synaptic cleft for too long because if it does, it means that signal is going to be continual and we want this signal to be short, sharp and quick. So this is um, one way in which we can really regulate um, how this synaptic transmission occurs. Uh, right, that is synaptic transmission in a nutshell.